Welcome to the thrilling conclusion of Dynasty Week here on the Fantasy Footballers. We bring up some trade targets, trade away, go through the news, talk about Saquon Barkley. Should he be the second running back selected in your Dynasty startup draft? Don't miss a moment. And now, we turn to the world of sports. The football season is upon us, and that means it's time to get ready for your fantasy football drafts. The ultimate draft kit from the fantasy footballers is the Cat's Pajamas, and only tool you need. The best rankings in the business. Sleepers, breakouts, values. It's even got a free companion app. Don't be a pigeon-livered foozler. The ultimate draft kit will keep you on the up and up, and keep all the hornswogglers at bay. Don't even think about entering a fantasy football draft without it. Don't be a square. Head to ultimatecraftkit.com today. Hi, this is Eric Dickerson, NFL Hall of Famer, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Oh, it's still dynasty time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Welcome one and all. Mike the Fantasy Hitman, Jason Moore. I'm Andy Holloway. Thursday, May 13th. Part two of Dynasty Week. This time it's personal. <laughs> right, right. We did have a live stream yesterday, so if you want more Dynasty content... You do. Then you can go check that out on the YouTubes. YouTube.com slash the Fantasy Footballers. If At this point, though, if you go do it, it will just be a stream. It is not going to be live. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have that technology. A pat- per- persistent live stream is not... <laughs> they have those. I mean, those are just those are called security cameras, but that's the Truman Show. Yes, yes exactly. Twenty four hours a day, and uh, you don't want to see that much of my life. Jason, you really don't. Jason wants to share that much of his life. Sure, well, come on in. I mean, Man. we're gonna spend a lot of time in the bathroom, but you're welcome <laughs> to join. Can you imagine how boring the Truman Show would be now. You got to watch Truman like browse Instagram for two hours on his couch. <laughs> got to watch somebody else use social media. He's not doing anything. Just just sitting there watching screens. Like oh, all of man. us. Ubering some food. Breaking news. Truman hearts this particular post. Yeah, exactly. All right, today, part two of Dynasty Week, we have some buy or sell we're going to do. Dynasty edition, of course. Some news to talk about. And we'll be bringing up a trade for and trade away candidate mm-hmm. for Dynasty Leagues. And then getting back into the Dynasty mailbag, answering some questions. Mike, we have a giveaway. You're darn right we have a giveaway. It is still We have going- a giveaways. Ooh, mm, right? I mean, technically. E- yes, technically, I think that was accurate. We are giving away two signed jerseys. One is from A.J. Brown. One is from Awesome Excellent, a.k.a. Austin Eckler as his, his his birth name. I mean, it's not as cool as Awesome Excellent, but great friend of the show. And it's real easy. It's real free to enter. Real free. Real free. Extra free. <laughs> What, what, am I wrong? Am I wrong? It's real free. It's real free. No, Mike, that you're, fake free. You're smashing it. Jump on Twitter. Follow at the FF Ballers. That's our main account. And then follow all of our personals. Andy is at Andy Holloway, at Jason FFL, and I am at FF Hitman. And we got a post that says, hey, tell us about your best dynasty trade. So put that in there. Make sure you're following us. Then go to Instagram and do the exact same thing over there, at Fantasy Footballers. The personals, though, those are all the same. At Andy Holloway, at Jason FFL, and I am at FF Hitman. And use the hashtag Dynasty Week in your post. Yeah. And boom, bam. You'll you be might entered. be awesome, excellent. I would. I wanted to jump in and be, you know, just say that all my trades in Dynasty Leagues qualify. Do they? Not at all. Yeah. No. And that's really, I mean, that's a lot of what this week is about. It is, you have to shoot your shot in yes. Dynasty Leagues more than, you know, in a redraft league. You make a mistake in redraft, it's it's a one year mistake. You make it in dynasty, you're living with that. Yes. And then if you make it, and one of your friends isn't a, a good manager, they will troll you for it forever. So, 
It's fun, man. It's, Be careful. It, it is. There's the it's higher stakes when you're making the dynasty trades. All right, let's do some buy sell. Buy or sell presented by Pristine Auction. Before we get into this incredible dynasty edition of buy or sell, Andy, I wasn't actually sure what what week it was. What week it was? Yeah, what week is it on the fantasy footballers? Dynasty week. Yeah, but there wasn't oh. there like. Mm. Welcome to Dynasty Week. You gotta, you gotta get the fan service. I was oh. a little slow on the uptake because I thought we were going back to a Justin Timberlake May joke. Oh, I thought you were bringing back. Oh, it's gonna no. be May. It's already May. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were gonna say something there, Jason. Were you, I was. Were just, you gonna uh, jump in? I was going to thank Mike for making sure we got that sweet drop, and now we know where we are. Yes, that's important. Buy or sell Dynasty Edition, Saquon Barkley, buy or sell. Saquon Barkley should be the second running back drafted in Dynasty startups with Christian McCaffrey as the number one. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a couple of players you could make an argument for. I think predominantly you're between, when you're looking at that second spot right now, looking at most consensus lists, looking at how the three of us have uh, our running back Dynasty startup uh, order selected, I, I, I think you're talking about would you rather have Saquon Barkley or Dalvin Cook? That's really the conversation, right? For Dynasty, who do you want? Do you want the guy who uh, did it bigger, biggest, best in Saquon, but it's been a while he's been injured? Do you want the more recent, clearly on the same team, same kind of structure, and you you can have he's more on confidence? His, he's on his second contract. Right, Dalvin Cook. Yeah. Um, I know my answer, yeah. so I'm curious. Uh, you know, I, I'm curious your guys' takes. I'm selling. I'm selling Saquon as the number two. I do have Dalvin Cook there. You can see my startup rankings in the Ultimate Draft Kit, and it's it's Dalvin Cook. And part of this is the philosophical thought of where you're not just doing age math. You're you're looking at the probability of a top five season for as long as I can get it. And I think I have a higher probability from Dalvin Cook in the next couple of years to get it than I do Saquon Barkley. Mm. And therefore, I'm going to go with Dalvin Cook because I want to win my league, not just finish third or fourth with an okay season. I, I tend to agree with you that the probability of two more top five seasons, like if you had to put your bet right now, sure, who's more likely to finish top five the next two years, I would. I would put it on Dalvin Cook. But – He's going to be 26 years old very soon. That's when things can start to get rocky, generally speaking, for uh, if you follow the, the age trend. Dalvin Cook can certainly be an outlier and, and you know prove people wrong and be a, a good running back for a few more years. But because of, because of the age gap being what it is, I leaned slightly towards Saquon. Yeah, and, and so you guys are speaking both sides of it, right? The age gap is there, but it's not it's that not massive, significant. Yeah. You know, it's like a year and a half between these guys. Um, and Dalvin seems like the more guaranteed, right? Because the last time we saw Saquon, he was it. He was all the team had, and they used him that way. Now you've got Kenny Galladay. Kadarius Tony. Oh, Kadarius Tony. Um, you know, they, they, he's great. They've got more. <laughs> they've got more. Uh, oh man, is that a Tony the Tiger? Yeah. Okay. Let's hope he's not good. Um, he's, we can't be good. No, because oh, he's gonna be great. great. He was drafted to be great. Um. The way that I look at it, though, is 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 this: um, both players have had catastrophic knee injuries, right? So I don't see they've both had a torn ACL. I yeah. don't see either one as a higher injury risk than the other, and I think both are awesome, incredible backs. So for me, the tiebreaker is the age. I have Saquon ahead uh, because I feel like if I get one, if they both go to the same age, I'm going to get one full extra season out of Saquon, and I don't think the gap in. But how many? How many? predictable offense years will you get out of cook versus saquon because well, you could change quarterbacks in new york you don't could have change in minnesota they could yeah minnesota was but right now i mean i think minnesota is gonna have a fantastic year i agree that's part of it like i think they're going to be a great football team this year 
I think they could they could go to the NFC title game. Like that's the level of confidence I have in that offense. So that splits the difference for me. Yeah, and and I I think we are splitting hairs. Um, you could have both. I select both. Sure, I'm going to take both at the. No oh, dude, if you could take both with the number two pick, that's the way. The to last go. three years, Barkley was the number one dynasty startup running back pick in 2019 and 2020 with McCaffrey at two. Last year it flipped. Or this year, I'm sorry, it flipped. Is there any thought, Jason, of going? I mean, if you're looking at age, which we we, I mean, we do, you know, we lay it out there. Age is not everything for Dynasty, but Johnny Taylor is a 22 year old running back. He he has. Is there any chance you would take him at, at no, two over those? Guys? There's 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 no chance I would take him because while while that could be the right pick, like it it could end up being that way. We just haven't seen him without check down rivers and the, 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 the pumping up of his reception total in his rookie year. Uh, I want to see what happens with this new quarterback outlook. And, and obviously if he's just as involved in the passing game as he was with Phillip rivers, then Jonathan Taylor very well mu should be the pick. Uh, I don't, I don't project or anticipate that to stay the same. Ignoring his reception totals over the last six games of the NFL season, Jonathan Taylor's 17 game pace was 338 carries for 2,100 yards and 20 touchdowns. <laughs> oh, man. Well, that's a Derrick Henry and stat line. That's, that's incredible. All right. That is Buy or Sell from Pristine Auction. Use the code BALLERS over at pristineauction.com. You'll get a $10 credit towards your first sports memorabilia purchase. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. All right, speaking of the Colts, they signed Eric Fisher, left tackle, to a one-year deal. That is good news for it's, that I mean, offensive it's, line. Yeah, it's hopefully good news as Eric Fisher is coming off of a torn Achilles, and he could be ready in August, but he, he, the the range of when he would be ready is like, August to the middle of the season. Yeah, I mean it's still it's still great news because they had a clear problem. Uh, Anthony Costanzo retired uh, on you know this last off season, and they really did not have a player there. So you're right; it might it, he might not be ready to start the season, but at some point he's back. It's a clear massive upgrade, which the aforementioned Jonathan Taylor, um, you know, who, who maybe should be more in consideration at that number two spot. Um, because of the offensive line, and, and Eric Fisher helps. All right, Packers, according to Ian Rappaport, have made a significant long-term extension offer to Aaron Rodgers. Two sides have been negotiating. A lot of the controversy around the Rodgers situation, uh, rumors abounded that it had to do with a contract dispute. Yeah, we have we have no so, idea. We No one really knows what Aaron wants. I mean, he knows. He probably knows. He wants to host Jeopardy. That's maybe, all we know. Maybe he doesn't even know what he wants. Uh but he feels disrespected. He feel he maybe he feels disrespected. Want disres you to want me? <laughs> maybe he feels disrespected by the contract that he has while he's seeing guys like uh, Patrick Mahomes be buying baseball <laughs> teams <laughs> and things like that with his contract. And Rogers is like, "Well, what? What the heck, man?" So th we will, if if it's true that they really have offered this long term extension, and he balks at this. Then it's, then it's done. Rodgers will not be on the Packers. And that will have just significant it, ramifications yes. for Jason <laughs> for and, most, his, and his dynasty most, team. Yeah, I would say mostly for me. Smaller <laughs> ramifications for um, you know the NFC North and the other teams right. and the Packers and uh, the new destination, but primarily my dynasty team is what is at stake here. On the Adam Schefter podcast, Juju Smith-Schuster, I find this comedic. So he's going to play more outside receiver in 2021. Over who? Who are you taking? What? Is this a, is this about Madden? <laughs> yes, he's going to when he's playing Madden, he's going to play a lot of. It just seems strange to me what are that you're talking you, about. You have Chase Claypool, James Washington, but you, uh, do, do, with Deontay Johnson and Chase, I don't Claypool. think we want this as fantasy players. We don't want Juju on the outside. No, he, he does. He can't play on the outside. His his you know reception perception totals on the outside were awful. He's a great slot receiver. Just be what you are, Juju. Man, that I, whatever. I guess if we're if we're gonna put Chase Claypool in the slot every once in a while, I'm for that. Every once in a while. Yeah. Uh, 
let's talk about the running back room in Atlanta. Oh man. It's a it's not a there's not a lot of people in it. There's Mike Davis. Uh the running backs coach came out and said the door's wide open for anyone to take over their backfield. Thanks, coach. Um, anybody I, anybody I, at all <laughs> is anybody here is this an open call that they want tryouts oh maybe that is what it is it's a tryout situation R right are you in the greater atlanta area <laughs> can you play running back this is a late night commercial yeah yes. tell me low if, budget if tony danza was just a little younger oh uh, he'd God. have an opportunity to play ball um yeah i mean the the reality here is um, from what I understand from local beat reporters and, and people that are in the know, Mike Davis is expected to be the primary running back. I said this before the draft that I was really rising on Mike Davis for this year because I, I, I expect, even though they had capital in the draft, they chose to not use it on a running back, and he's set up for success this year. He's going to get a lot of volume, and I, I don't think the undrafted free agents and, you know, I'm uh, any anyone else there can really compete if it's an I open don't competition. Think that Mike Davis is very good. He doesn't need to be very good. He so I do think there are opportunities there, and I want to. I wanted to highlight last nine games of last season. Not very good. Yeah, he he. One hundred ninety attempts, six hundred ninety eight yards. You yeah, know, that's a seventeen strong. game pace over those nine games. Is six hundred ninety eight yards. Um, he can catch the football, and he's the veteran, so he's certainly the leader. But he faded, and you wonder if someone could take over at the second half. That's what I'd be looking for. I would imagine that if the cap situation was all right in Atlanta, they would have put a claim in on Carry on Johnson. They they still seem to me to be a free agent. Uh, you know, if Julio gets traded after June first, I expect that they'll look at the free agent market. I don't know that there is anyone out there. I mean, who's who's out there? Todd Gurley and Devonta Freeman. Like they already they just they, they, they had Todd guys. Gurley. Yeah, I mean that's their actual past. Those two <laughs> players are yeah. the Falcons' past. That's funny. Uh, but keep an eye on it because someone else is gonna. You know, Quadri Olison had one carry last year. But and if if it is Mike Davis, even if he fades over the second half. Yeah, you could get a nice. For the first half, I mean, he, Todd, if you want to talk about someone who faded over the second half, Todd Gurley just absolutely evaporated into, into water molecules. But he was awesome for fantasy during that first part because he just kept scoring touchdowns. Wouldn't you over evaporate eight, eight touchdowns. into over on, rushing touchdowns for Davis? gas not water yeah you would evaporate into air molecules right like evaporating into water molecules right that's seems, not true seems wrong Con you would condensate into water molecules you can't molecules. evaporate into water molecules uh -uh. i don't think you can evaporate no. into water that's it's condensation right it's like the opposite so, what, what is a cloud not water a cloud is not water Cl is, is a cloud water cloud is it's gas I don't yes know. exactly evaporated <laughs> He's saying it was, what Mike's okay, saying is you evaporate, molecules. and then once you get high enough, you become kind of like a cloud. Okay, I, I see what you're saying. He didn't become water. He was already a, a mo water molecule. Okay. He just evaporated. Okay. There All you right, go. We got there. Yeah. yeah. Important distinctions here. Look, on the backwards is the new forwards. Up is the new down. Fast <laughs> is the new slow. You were saying over under of uh, eight touchdowns this season Correct. for Mike Davis? I will – I'll – if the roster stands as it is now going into the start of the season, I'll, I'll take, take the, the over. over. Love Michael Keaton. All right. Me too. That was today's news and notes presented by Sleeper. Switch your league to the fastest growing fantasy platform today. And we'll be doing some mock drafts very, very soon. I believe very next, soon. I believe next week is our first mock draft, which will be on Sleeper. Their ADP just got an update today. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be so exciting. I'm super excited for that. See? See, <laughs> <laughs> we are going to talk trades in a in a moment. We are. We're going to talk players to trade for and trade away. Which I mean, you got to make those decisions wisely in Dynasty. And a wise decision is taking care of yourself, and that includes your mental health. I want to thank to, uh, today's sponsor, Headspace. You may have tried meditation before and it didn't work out. Maybe you felt like you were doing it wrong. If mental health is part of your self care plan this year, which it should be. Go ahead and check out Headspace. All three of us have jumped on there. It is easy to sign up. It is easy to use. And they provide a daily dose of mindfulness in the form of guided meditations in an easy-to-use app. Meditations start at just one minute each. They even have a set of walking meditations. They're easy to fit into the busiest schedule. 
Look, you deserve to feel happier, and Headspace is meditation made, made simple. Go to headspace.com slash footballers. That's headspace.com slash footballers. Check this out. You're going to get a free one-month one, one month trial with access to the full library uh, meditations for every situation. This is the best deal being offered right now. Headspace.com slash footballers today. And we also want to thank a new sponsor, Uncommon Goods. Uh, guess what they have? A bunch of uncommon goods. It's honestly, I mean, it's, it's it's a good domain. It's a real good domain. Good job out there. But you got to check it out. It's a shop filled with totally unique, totally unexpected, uh, you know, gifts for yourself, for others. When someone says, like, surprise me with something I didn't know that I wanted. Or didn't know existed. That's where uncommon exactly. goods is. Uh, I got a, a, a cocktail smoker where I can, like, give that that smoke flavor to I, drinks is pretty cool i got my daughter for her birthday is coming up and she loves she does snow globes and she does space i got her a mars snow globe there you go so it's like red dust instead of the dude it's That's cool if you're shopping for someone's birthday or anniversary or whatever totally unique gifts for everyone in your life uh and and you're supporting you know artists and small independent businesses that sell their stuff on uncommon goods they look for products that are high quality unique often handmade made in the u.s they don't sell products made with leather, feathers, or fur. It's a Brooklyn-based company that's all about giving back, and every purchase you make, they give a dollar back to a non-profit partner of your choice. They've donated more than $2 million to date. To get 15% off your next gift, go to uncommongoods.com slash footballers. That's uncommongoods.com slash footballers for 15% off. Don't miss out on a limited-time offer. Uncommon Goods, we're all out of the ordinary. Let's talk trades. All right, we're each picking a player we would like to trade for and a player we'd like to trade away in Dynasty Leagues. This is one of the most popular things people ask. They want to know, who do I target? Where is the value, right? Because you want somebody that is maybe undervalued. And then who do I get rid of and, and, and why? I'm going to kick it off with my trade for target. I think that as a general concept, you should be looking at players that got the gut punch uh, during the draft. And so one, that, my player that I'll bring up in a moment, we'll talk more about, but like Will Fuller is an example. Like Will Fuller is mm -hmm. a player that is not desirable because of the immediate one-year deal with a team that now picked up Jalen Waddell. Look, he, he could be with another team next year. He's a very talented player that was a contributor in fantasy. He might be available on the cheap. But my player that I'm going to go with today is Josh Jacobs. That's wild, Interesting. man. Interesting. I'm going, I'm going with Josh Jacobs uh, because he's another gut punch offseason player where you need to set the emotion aside of Josh Jacobs and look at the fundamentals of the situation. He is 23 years old. He is significantly more talented than Kenyon Drake. Kenyon Drake is, to me, a dynasty distraction. And he made Josh Jacobs available. He's 23 years old. He was on 300-plus, 1,300-yard, 14-touchdown pace last year. His fundamentals is that his rookie season, he was the 18th best running back. His sophomore season, he was the 8th best running back. The fundamentals of Josh Jacobs is that he is great. What do we know about the team? They run it around the goal line. He's been a great running back, and I think that Drake is a complete distraction. Jacobs will have the majority of the work on this team. It's not like the last two years we haven't complained about Devontae Booker or other Jalen Richards being mm -hmm. on the field, and yet here's Jacobs at 18 and at, at 8 last year. There were only three or four games where you really weren't happy playing him last season out of 17 weeks. So uh, I think Jacobs at that age, when you, we just spent so much time talking about running backs and the ages and the impact and how one year makes all the difference. He's 23. So I think Jacobs is a perfect target to get, you know, somebody that you can pick up much cheaper than the real value. Yeah, I mean, when you're trying to target specific players to trade for, you're looking for a handful of, reasons that say I, this is why he's a trade target uh one is the the gut punch that you're talking about sometimes it's just talent and you're trying to get them before the breakout but the talent gap uh for Josh Jacobs is huge and and when you're targeting someone 
you need a reason why you're going to be able to afford them below what their value is. Who is undervalued? Um, I've got another player somewhat similar to that, and it's because he's now all of a sudden the old busted. He's not the new hotness. I'm talking about trading for Amari Cooper, mm. who is actually really, really good at football. He <laughs> Yeah. Um, now, I realize he's not the young hotness. That's C.D. Lamb. It's, oh, he's going to take over. This is going to be his team. Uh, I think Amari Cooper's value has really taken a hit. Uh, he, he had a disappointing season this last season. I mean, he finished with wide receiver 16, and he didn't have a quarterback, but it, it, was, it was disappointing, mostly because of Dak's injury. But Dak is coming back. Amari Cooper, whether we want C.D. Lamb to be the number one target or not, I think is still very odds on to be the number one wide receiver for that team. He's only 27 years old. Michael Gallup is an unrestricted free agent after this season. So the future outlook of Amari Cooper is fantastic. They, they gave him a hundred million dollar contract. He's not old. He's in his prime. It's about to be a one, two punch with him and CD. He's got, he's tied to a great young quarterback, the perpetually bad defense. Um, and, and he's, He's really, really good. L listen to the uh, receiving yards before turning 27. Here's the this list. This is all-time players? All-time. Number one, Randy Moss. Ooh. Number two, DeAndre Hopkins. Mike Evans, Larry Fitzgerald. And then at number five, Amari Cooper because he's good. That is ahead of Julio Jones and Calvin Johnson, the next on the list. He's a really good player that I don't think – I mean, right now – Can I add to your ammo? You can. Please Would you do. like me to? Two, a couple of things. One, if you just look at the what this offense wants to do in Dallas, the passing volume is insane. It really is. The level of uh, pass attempts and yards that Dak was putting up before he got hurt, mind-blowing. Number two, this is not Thielen and, and Jefferson. Because right. Jefferson, yeah, he's the new hotness, but Thielen's going to be 31. And he's aging out. This is 26-year-old Amari Cooper on a team that passes the ball significantly more than Minnesota. So I like it. I think it's a great target. And and if you think about it, like in a startup draft right now, and I and I I would probably value CD Lamb ahead of Amari Cooper just next to each other because you've got a, a an age gap there. I mean, CD's a little bitty baby boy, but you're talking about he's being drafted he's as the 17th overall player, <laughs> and Amari Cooper's down near the 50s in startup drafts. Okay, I like it. All right, I'm jumping in with a lower tier player that you are trading for, in the hopes that he becomes something. I like it. It, have I a man? You, this, this is mind blowing stuff here. Uh, I'm talking about Adam Troutman, tight end from the New Orleans Saints, and here is my it's argument. Important you say that. Yes. Yeah. You may not realize who Adam Troutman is. He was uh, he was a rookie last year. He didn't really do much. But here's what we know about Adam Troutman: with very very little draft capital in the 2020 draft, the the New Orleans Saints selected Adam Troutman in the back of the third. They had Four draft picks that year. Four players, and one of them was a, they prior, prioritized Adam Troutman. Jared Kuk, Josh Hill, the veteran tight ends from that team, they were both waived. They, didn't, they weren't uh, out of contract. They were waived. They were removed. That's 70 tight end targets that were vacated, the third most in the NFL, and 32% of the total targets in New Orleans have been vacated. They need to be replaced. Who's going to replace those targets? Is it going to be Traquan Smith, who is the second best option? He's the second best wide receiver on the team. He's going into year four. He has played every single season of his career with a hall of with a first ballot Hall of Fame quarterback, and he has never managed to surpass 450 yards. Sure, Traquan Smith could have a, a late season breakout, be Devon, the Devontae Parker of this year, but the odds are against him. This is what Adam Troutman was able to do as a rookie. He graded out as Pro Football Focus's highest graded run blocking tight end. As a rookie, he came in and and was an outstanding player, a a full three down skill set, and that's important. You want your you want your players to be able to be on the field to run block, so that you know they're not just on and off the field. They can be on for every single down, and and then when they're not run blocking, he's getting out there for a pass and. His college profile is incredible. He went to a small school. He went to Dayton. That's fine. But he had a 38% dominator score. To put that in context, 
Travis Kelsey in college, a 27% dominator. Darren Waller, 32%. Zach Ertz, 32%. Adam Troutman has an elite breakout age. He just, to me, he seems primed to be the next guy for this team. I'm not, I'm not going to sit over here and say Adam Troutman in 2021, the full breakout of him being a, he's going to take over and then we're going to draft him as an elite tight end. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying I think over the course of the next two years, Adam Troutman is going to become a, a – he will become a top five tight end by then, but the window to trade for him mm -hmm. will be slammed shut as we all in 2020, the offseason of 2022, are going, Adam Troutman is the next big up-and-coming tight end. Yeah, they, the, the window <laughs> to trade for him is absolutely now, and, and it's important – when you decide, if you decide, like, hey, I could use a, a young tight end to go after, I'm going to try to trade for him, it's important that you say, I'm going fishing. Like, that's <laughs> – when you go to make these offers, there you go. I'm going fishing. Right. I don't even I, – I, he's on the he's on the waiver wire in leagues. Phew. You, you can there's fish, no, there's fish no that question. wire. Get I, that trout, man. I mean, I, you've, I told you this in the studio yesterday. I came with my arguments against – Troutman and they're easy they're, look it is easy to make and, and I've arguments. got them they're, they're bullet points they they sound like this Doyle Higby and Joku Burton Reed Seals Jones OJ Howard Austin Safarian Jenkins Vance McDonald there are a lot of hype tight ends from year to year and that that could be the direction I mean if they don't build the offense around him if, if Sean Payton doesn't want to do it then then you're not going to get what you want out of him but you make a lot of compelling arguments and this was also an offense where you saw Dan Arnold flash for the first time where you took advantage of physical ability in the passing game and here was Dan Arnold breaking out uh towards the end of the year with Breeze and then moving on to Arizona and now Carolina and the vacated targets I mean that's a huge part of this offense they've always used the tight end Jimmy Graham Jared Cook Kobe Fleener and uh <laughs> yeah. who could also be an argument against but yes. but the thing is is you're looking for uh, I like the dynasty angle more than I even like the redraft and then I like the cost. I mean, the cost is nothing. The cost might be waiver wire, or it is ju just go trade somebody a backup for them. You know, go find somebody who needs their backup. And or then, sneak him as a he's a Trojan horse. Mm -hmm. Have him be a throw and be like, eh, it, it, uh, throw in Adam Troutman and we'll we'll seal this deal. Yeah, how do you even pronounce that last? Tr tr Troutman. Tr Trout? Trout? Who is he? I'm going fishing. <laughs> uh, no, I like it. I think he's a sneaky target in dynasty league. So you persuaded me and then I don't have to make him my vendetta the rest of the off season. So it's, <laughs> it's good for everybody. All right. Less fun. Trade away targets. Oh, less this fun. Is, this is fun. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to go with Zeke. Oh, Jason, how's that taste? And I'm not, I'm, we'll find out when <laughs> a little bit after June 1st. And I'm not, I'm not taking the, the, shot at Jason on purpose here who just acquired him in a dynasty league. But when you look at it, I mean, the, the, the facts of the facts is yards per attempt, his efficiency has descended for three consecutive years in Dallas. He has become less efficient. He's become more touchdown dependent. And the, the team has seemed less obligated to give him every snap the way that they used to. He will be 26 this year. Uh, we talked about that 27 wall that is mm -hmm. coming. So this year, this year should be fine. Like, don't freak out. And it's probably not Raheem Mostert either. It's not one year and done for Zeke. But efficiency, top five performances, top five play, this might be the last year you can get Zeke value for him before a decline is evident that or, or, you know, or feared because mm -hmm. of signs that you've seen on the field. Right now you can excuse last year a little bit, the efficiency, because Dak wasn't there. So if you want to go get Zeke value, I don't know, like Brooks did, go get it because this is an opportunity to do it before he gets too old. Yeah, they, and Tony Pollard's good. I mean, he at least has somebody there that can take the load off, and that might just reduce Zeke to a back end RB one instead of a front end RB one in a dynasty league. As someone who literally just acquired Zeke in a dynasty league, I I don't disagree with anything you're saying. In general, uh, you know, th all this advice is kind of in a vacuum. I think Zeke is someone you look to move on from these running backs in their second contract who are. Uh, you know, th there might be writing on the wall, and, th and that is that is Zeke. It, my situation was a little different. Um, I wasn't trying to get Zeke. I needed a running back, and I was trying to get rid of, uh, capitalize on <laughs> Devonte Adams. Um, but maybe that's stupid. Time will tell. Brooks, you and I are going to have a great season uh, with these two players. I hope Thank Aaron Rodgers 
I can't believe it's you traded away Devontae Adams because there are rumors. We shall see. And I got a first rounder out of it as well. Yeah. But anyways, my trade away target. Oh, brother Jason. And I love this. I am very oh, happy with this. Oh, man. We are, I'm going to get, I'm gonna get so a lot of flack people. for this. Okay? Yes. A lot of people going to be upset. Woo. But you don't want to trade away players once it's clear that you should move on from them. That is when you no longer have value. Then you just get rejections, the way I'm getting for James Robinson. You want to <laughs> trade a player that can net you a haul, a ton. Andy, when you traded Todd Gurley, it was before the, the falloff, and you got a haul. You got Dalvin Cook plus others. Now is multiple the time to multiple trade. First. Yeah. Now is the time to trade away Derrick Henry. It, it is oh, now. Oh, brother. And that's not to say he's going to be terrible or that I – don't think Derrick Henry has an awesome season, but there are so many reasons to capitalize now. Over the last eight years, only one running back inside the top 10 of Dynasty ADP over the age of 27 has maintained that top 10 status the next year. It was Adrian Peterson. Maybe Derrick Henry can do it. Maybe, maybe not. But he is 27 years old, and he is coming off a massive, massive workload, 378 rush attempts that's the Holy most crap. It, what? Rushing, not touches, rushing attempts. It's crazy how you forget that stuff. And there is, if you don't remember it, because, you know, we, we haven't had a lot of players getting that kind of workload in the modern day era, but even uh, going back to all time, 370, there's a, a 370 carry curse uh, as coined from. Uh, is that the Larry Garrett Johnson curse? Uh huh. That's the Larry Johnson curse. Uh, research from uh, Gary Davenport that kind of looked at all of these players. And the only time that a player has ever improved his yardage total after a 370 carry uh, season was 1984, when good friend of the show, Hall of Famer Eric Dickerson, did it once. Outside of that single time, it's never happened. And now here's the thing. You might think to yourself, well, of course. I mean, they had 370 carries. So, you know, chances are they have fewer yards the next year, maybe fewer carries. The average of every player who got 370 carries the following season was a reduction of average 40% fewer total yards. I'm not saying that's going to happen. I'm just saying that is in the realm of outcomes. And, and nobody uh, on this list... Nobody in history got 370 plus carries without being a dominant running back. You, you right. know what I mean? Like these were all great. Sean Alexander's and Larry. That's Johnson. what I was just it's going really, to look at. It's really hard with Henry to make that determination. Oh, I know. It, it feels... later start, and then you look at a player like Marshawn Lynch, who had two absolutely massive dominating years: year 27, year 28. And you're like, well, do I want two years, two more? Mm -hmm. From Derrick Henry. Is that worth it to me? And the thing is, is if you trade him right now before anything bad could possibly happen and you get a haul, then if he's good, it doesn't matter. You got value for it. But if it turns out that he ends up, you know, I mean, look, one injury to, you know, a key player on the Titans who have one of the most shallow offenses in the NFL He's not going to produce the way he has this the, the last two years. So um, he's he's one where I think I want to capitalize, acquire youth, go after Cam Akers plus other stuff, and all of a sudden you're retooling your team, getting a bunch of draft picks or uh, extra stuff, and you might end up with the better running back. So that's what I'm looking to do if I've got Derrick Henry. Well, we are, I will complete the trifecta then that we are all trying to uh, advise trade away these running backs. That's wow. interesting. I didn't even wow. know who your guys' wow. trade away were, and they're all running backs. Wow, the value is still out of place. And uh, I echo the same thing that Jason was saying. This player's going to have a productive year, but I think you're at peak value right now, and I think that it's only going to go down over time. I would trade away Miles Sanders if I had him. And you, because you can Because paint. you hate him. <laughs> that's, that's why. Because I don't like him. Uh, because you can. The picture you could paint for Miles Sanders is – it can still look like an excellent painting for for fantasy value. He's only 24. He's heading into the third year of his career. He's going to be a productive player. And you look at dynasty startups, 
He's still going in the third, high in the third round ahead of players like Michael Thomas and Joe Mixon. But here, follow the money. Follow the actions of the Philadelphia Eagles. Kenneth Gainwell was drafted in the fifth round. Mm-hmm. Kenneth Gainwell was drafted to do one thing in the NFL, and that's be a running back that catches passes. He, was the ap- he is the best pass catcher in this draft, and they got, uh, they got him at a draft day discount. Looking at Miles Sanders last year, Pro Football Focus graded out the, the receiving game of these running backs. Miles Sanders ranked 148th out of 154 eligible running backs. It was awful. It was putrid. Carryon Johnson, who they just picked up off of the waiver wire, has he has pass catching ability. So I I believe the way I'm projecting it, Miles Sanders is still the starting running back for the Philadelphia Eagles. He's still going to be a fine fantasy player. But I think that this team is trying to move him more uh, away from being a three-down player, which when he was drafted in the second round with that profile coming out of Penn, that's who we thought we were getting. And I don't think that's the case anymore. But there are still going to be people in your dynasty league that believe that Miles Sanders can be a true three-down player, but he is not for me anymore. So I would try and trade a two-down pl- or a a two-down player for a three-down player price. I'm gonna have to think about Miles a little bit. I just don't know if I wasn't worried about Carry On in Detroit with DeAndre Swift. Am I worried about Carry On in it's, Philadelphia? No, I, I it's not that I'm I'm necessarily worried about Carry On Johnson as a player, which I I think Carry On is a fine player. He's just been hurt. It's just following the actions of the team that saying we are not satisfied with what is happening on this team. I, I agree with what you're saying. The, specifically and, the running back position. And what, what the, the transactions that they've been doing show that they're not looking to make Miles Sanders a give him everything three down back like they were trying to make him going into last year. They saw that it, it didn't work out and they need depth and they might need specialists in there. And so I, I agree with all that. My only question is, what can you get for him? Are you going to find someone in your league that's really willing to pay up for Miles Sanders? I believe, you, I believe there will be a few of them. He was hurt three times last year. There is also that. He missed week one with a hamstring. He mixed, missed week seven and eight with a knee and then missed week 17 with a knee. So, uh, You know what, guys? We should bring some more backs in here. Yeah, they paid Jordan Howard, and then they brought in Gainwell, and they brought in Carrion. So, yeah, I mean, maybe it's a matter of stair-stepping down your expectations for Sanders, so go out and trade him for what somebody else is expecting him to be. Yep. All right, let's jump into the mailbag. Mailbag. Dynasty. All right, if you have a question, you can go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com, click the submit a question button, or dial the voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. All right, Brooks, do you have a favorite question here that we should hit first? Oh, one sec, let me look. Was it oh, he, was, he, was, <laughs> he was even. He, Boo. What are you counting playing, your money? They're playing cards they're, back there. Oh, man. What Al were Borland. your cards? Is that Omaha? Yeah, they're playing. You trading Bitcoin back there? I, can, I mean, I can pick a question, Brooks. I just didn't know if you had a favorite. Nah. Okay. No okay, favorite. All right. Um, what are the main uh, draft strategy changes when switching from redraft to dynasty? So if this is, I saw this after the first Dynasty Week show, a bunch of people on Twitter said, hey, I don't have an all time. I don't have a greatest dynasty trade ever because this is my first year. Sure. Um, congratulations. You're going to have a lot of fun with it. Mm-hmm. The biggest change for me, and it's a monumental difference, is really running backs in the first couple rounds. Like, if I'm in a redraft league, I focus on running backs in the first couple rounds. I, uh, you know, we don't ever want to lock into any strategy, but more often than not, lately, over the last couple of years, I'm leaving the first two rounds in my redraft or keeper leagues with two running backs. And more often than not, in fact, I would say almost 100% of the time, if I'm doing a dynasty startup, I'm leaving the first two rounds with two wide receivers uh, because of everything we talked about here today. You, you might notice where we go, oh, Derrick Henry, he's 27. He's so old. Oh, Amari Cooper, he's only 27. He's so young. It's the same age. That's because the, the shelf life is so different for those positions where I don't want to spend my high capital on running backs early in a startup draft. I, there's, there's, you know, a handful of those phenomenal young, gonna play another six, seven, eight, ten years at wide receiver. Uh, I, I tend to shift that way in the beginning of my dynasty drafts. And you're gonna be shocked when you see where some of these rookies are drafted. 
like uh, especially rookie wide receivers. So my example would be Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase in a startup. This guy has not played a single snap in the NFL, but in a startup draft, where do you think he's going to go, Jay? Top three rounds. Um, I personally, uh, if you listen to last week's show, I wouldn't do it myself. I'm not but saying you yes, would. Yes, I'm I saying think you will. You'll, for you'll sure. be shocked. So, and in a redraft league, I mean Jamar, sixth round, seventh round. There will there will be a substantial difference, and it's you. When when it comes to rookies, you just have to call your shot. If you're going to go after them, you're going to have to go after them earlier than other people. Instagram question: Odell or Juju in Dynasty? Oh, that's great. I mean, you got two different disappointments, but I, I'm going to take the younger one when they're both disappointing, um, and they both have reasons why they will tell you they're still going to be great. There's a large age gap between Juju Smith-Schuster and Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, I would rather have the one that can disappoint me for a longer amount of time uh, in Juju. I guess I lean Odell. Really? Yeah, just a, by a very small amount, but simply because I think this year Odell will be the leading fantasy producer of the wide receiver core in Cleveland. I lean Odell as well, even though Odell Beckham has not had a 100-yard game since week six of 2019. Yeah. Do you, do you guys realize that That's Juju rough. was the wide receiver 18 this year? Yeah. Okay. Just I mean, I, I know we all love to be upset with his production because he never turned into the dominant heir apparent to Antonio Brown. But if you're full PPR, you're probably stupid not to take Juju. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah. It, it's, a four year, it's 24 and a half years old versus 28 and a half years old. This is another tough question. FXR brother on Instagram says... Do you sell Miles Gaskin right now? Oh yeah, I mean in Dynasty, yes. This is Dynasty week, Mike. Yes. Okay. So, yeah. 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 What a dumb. Th I'm so sorry. Yeah, what yeah. an idiot. What? What How other? Dare you. What other kind is there? Uh, but there was the news blurb. I don't know if we mentioned it or not, but the the Miami Dolphins put a claim in on Carryon Johnson. Uh, they and they didn't get him because the Eagles had the higher priority. But the Miles Gaskin survived the draft. We could get to the start of the season, and Miles Gaskin maybe survives training camp additions well, they, as well. They added Malcolm Brown too. I, yes. I keep bringing it up no, no, as it, though it, it doesn't. You know, people don't think it matters. It really does. It does. It matters because they they added him. They pursued him this off season. They like him. They talk about him well. The same way that Malcolm Brown was annoying for Rams yes. uh, backfield. There's so little draft capital in Miles Gaskin. They, he does not matter to them. It's the same thing as James Robinson. It's like if you don't invest in in this player, yeah, they were they were absolutely good on the field last year. It doesn't matter at the end of the day to those teams. They aren't the long term fix. They're not the solution. They're not the running back that's going to be there. Uh, my original trade away target was uh, Chase Edmonds. Um, it's similar situation. Like there is some hype that this year he could be the guy. Don't trade on the promise mm -hmm. uh, that he could be the guy, and you're getting that that value. You're you're taking all the value of the rumor and you're acquiring it. Twitter question from Dennis Stash: Does Gardner Minshew still have value? Mm -mm. Nope. To his family? Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, as a human being, yes. Tons all of human value. beings yeah. have value. Well, yeah. Everyone. But to your fantasy team? No. No. no, no. no. Well, no. To, but to an NFL team, no. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he could be a backup. Yeah, I mean, I guess, look, if I'm... Are the jorts put out on the, like, little boat and pushed out to <laughs> a, Viking, yeah. a, Viking a Viking funeral Viking for funeral. the jorts? If you're an NFL team... You throw a flaming football into it? Mm -hmm. If you're an NFL team... Yeah, okay, so I'll speak for myself. I would absolutely want Gardner Minshew as my backup quarterback. Sure. Honestly, uh, he, he would make a really good, like scout team quarterback if you've got a mobile quarterback you're going up against you want someone to replicate it'd be good for practices uh, but in your dynasty league this is dynasty week no all right i'm asking this one because i want to hear your guys' answer this is from chase in north dakota yo 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 ballers yo should i trade dalvin cook for clyde edwards alaire and the 103 in my rookie draft this year dalvin what? cook for clyde and the 103 Okay, so right now the 103, you've got it, – it seems to be in a lot of places N Najee Harris, Jamar Chase, Kyle Pitts, sometimes ETN. Um, sometimes Javante Williams. Yeah, some, sometimes Javante. Let's assume – Sometimes Devonta Smith. Let's assume that Najee and 
Chase yes. are, are the one two. gone. Yeah. So you can have anyone So let's else. just call it ET. You could go um, Pitts and Clyde, or you go ETN and Clyde. And in both of those cases, I'm perfectly fine with that trade. Okay. I, I wasn't, the odds I, it's of, a yes from me. I would I would trade Dalvin for, for Clyde and ETN. Yeah. Take, double up. Take two shots at the running back position. I think I would do that too. Yeah, I, I'm I'm fine with that. I do think I would look at my roster and just say, do, you know, if, if if I'm a little shallow and I could use depth and use more pieces and get a little younger, then that is an absolutely fair trade. But if I'm really contending, if I am, you know, uh, uh, my roster is like I can win a championship this year, you talk about, oh, I'll get two for one. Well, Dalvin is one of those rare. He's two. You're getting two for yeah. one in one slot. You just can't replicate that for fantasy points on your roster and, and winning championships. It's like so, CMC, right? Exactly. You, well, CMC you, is three. Oof. Oh, so I've got five running backs in my two spots oh, in Dynasty? Oh, you dirty dog. Oh, I set that one up. All right, that'll do it for today's episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. We hope you enjoyed Dynasty Week. I know I did. It was great. Yeah. All right. Next week, we'll talk to you. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.